everybody, welcome back to Let's Go Geo. I'm your field guide, Heather, and today I want to bring you guys some tips and some information and ideas about how to stay safe out there in the field. We talk a lot here about going out in the field and collecting rocks and looking at samples, and it involves also being in areas that a lot of times are dusty, and this is actually very, can be problematic for your lungs. I actually recently am having some issues with this uh, because of all the time I spend in the field, it actually can negatively impact your lungs and your breathing. I know firsthand, so I want to make sure that I, that I give you guys this information ahead of time so you know to be careful out there. And as we know, a lot of really awesome outcrops are in places like arid lands where it tends to be dustier and, and worse air quality. It's just the way it is. That's where the good outcrops are accessible. Also, if you're processing rocks, this can be an issue too. When you're handling and processing rocks, things that are crumbly or you're slicing or whatever, you end up being exposed to dust. So what I have are a few things here to share with you that I have done as solutions to try to help, um, you know, mitigate these issues. So here's what we have. The first thing, this is a small vacuum. So I got this because I needed something to bring with me when I'm in the field. Obviously, if you're at home, you can have a larger vacuum, maybe a shop vac or something. But when you're traveling around, um, I didn't want to bring along with me like these giant things that don't have a lot of space as it is with everything else I'm bringing along. This one's by Hoto. And it's just this really small portable vacuum that you can use to clean up dust. So around your camp space, if you're in a tent or canopy, or even maybe in a camper or something, you might find a lot of dust accumulates everywhere on your work surfaces, stuff like that. So just having something small that you can kind of suck up the dust is really nice to have around. And then the added benefit is this thing also serves as a blower. So if you're actually working with specimens, it's actually really nice to have something where you can blow off the dust well, so it works both ways. So that's one way to get rid of some of the dust in your environment. The other thing you can do is you can simply monitor the dust and your air quality in your environment. This one is a pretty affordable one. It's by the company Vivor. It is, like I said, an air quality monitor. And this tracks PMs, both PM 2.5s and 10s as well as some other things too. So you can use this around camp or also even at home because you can track things like formaldehyde and CO2 as well, which I learned just from having this, how much CO2 actually builds up in enclosed spaces, such as in a tent or a vehicle. When you're driving around, if you turn this thing on, you'll quickly find, um, yeah, CO2 builds up and that, that can actually give you headaches. So it's, it's interesting to monitor that as well. And if you're like me, and you do have already some sensitive lungs and breathing issues in environments where the when the PMs get high, when you have a lot of fire smoke, which this is just an increasing problem now that I'm dealing with, um, actually quite hard to really do anything about it. I mean, I've been in the field and the fire smoke can be unbearable and actually quite hard to get out of because the winds shift and move the smoke around. So um, I already am a little bit of my own alarm. I know if I wake up in the morning at camp, I can feel it already like a little tingle or itch in my throat from bad air quality that I've been sleeping in at camp. Having a monitor also though will confirm that you have high PMs. And when you get a reading that's too high, it might tell you that, yeah, you just, it's time to leave the area. And you can get data on, um, what is bad air quality, what your PMs should be at for like 24 hour limits. I'll put links in the description to that as well. And then you'll know what is a bad reading. So the other thing that kind of goes along with reading your air quality, similar, is this guy. This is a radio code and it's actually a radiation detection device. And I call this the pocket scintillator because it's so small. I mean, this is actually inside of a case here. But when you pull this out, it's just a tiny little scintillator, or you can think of it like a Geiger counter. But in this case, it also has a spectrograph feature that you can use to determine what in the environment is causing the radiation. I like carrying this thing around. It's really easy to carry around with me in the field. 
but it's also a nice tool to have around the home too. This comes into play uh, back to when I said, if you're processing rocks, very important. Uh, and be careful, don't just assume that a sample is or isn't radioactive because you, we might tend to think of things as very obviously radioactive. Certain specimens can be brightly green or yellow and we think, oh, that might be a host of uranium. But actually, uranium can accumulate in a lot of uh, unsuspecting looking rocks. So you, you really can do yourself a favor by testing it first and making sure that you're not cutting something that does have like uranium content, something that is radioactive. And then if you're cutting that, you just know, well, you can still cut it, but be careful or don't cut it. But just be careful, extra careful with that dust because you might be at that point, um, you might be breathing in radioactive dust. And with those things, you can obviously monitor your air quality. But the other thing you want to do is uh, always wear some protective thing like a mask. So this is an N95 mask, which would be... Uh, a good thing to wear uh, because this is actually going to filter out a lot of those harmful particles, the N95 mask. But really, I would say any kind of mask at all would be something even like a handkerchief. You don't have to have this. It is going to be a little better quality, but you could realistically just put something to block your passageway so you're not inhaling uh, that dust. And I am kind of bad on this. I, I I understand, I kind of hate wearing these masks too, especially for me. They're very large on my face and they tend to, they tend to push up near the eye like that. So they kind of drive me crazy. Uh, so I can sympathize with people who don't like wearing masks, but I can say that I can also uh, say that when you start having breathing issues, you realize like, oh, well, I should have been wearing a mask more often. So big recommendation there for some kind of protection. Um, whether you're digging in stuff that's dusty, sometimes when we hunt for rocks or fossils, we get in uh, dusty environments. If you're out in, in arid regions, you're going to have a lot of exposure potentially to dust on, especially on like windy days. Or if you're, like I said, processing or cutting samples, wear some protection. Lastly, what you can do, these things help you mitigate the dust, but if you're in an environment where you think the air quality is bad and you need to be out there, this is a problem I run into, is that I'm, I'm simply in the field, I'm trying to work on a project, I'm getting content for new adventures here, I don't want to leave. So I ended up getting an air filter to actually filter the air for me so that I can stay at camp. And that's what this is. This is an air purifier. So you get a filter in here and it will, it does work. I know this one works. This is the Mooka air purifier. You could put this at camp. If you're in an enclosed space, maybe a tent space, or if you can enclose your canopy in a camper, in an RV, or at home uh, for a small room. So you can actually, fil you can use this to filter any smallish to medium sized space. And I've tested it with the air quality monitor to see if it was actually working. And I did see improvements in the PMs. So it will work and it does help make you feel better. So hopefully this stuff can help you guys as well. If you're in the field, if you're handling rocks, if you're getting into rock hounding, just be really careful out there that you don't harm your lungs and you're aware of some of these issues. I do have other videos where I talk about um, PMs. So if you want to better understand, if you're new to PMs, particulate matter, uh, this is a real issue. Uh, and with fire smoke, it's becoming worse of an issue. So I have a long video all about PMs and dust. So you can check that out. I'll also stick that uh, link in the description if you want to check that out. Otherwise, some of this stuff is fairly affordable and totally worth it. Uh, if you're trying to protect your airways and your lungs. So I hope that helps. Otherwise, I will see you guys out there on the next adventure here at Let's Go Geo. Mm -hmm.